Firefly, a show and subsequent film that have garnered a cult following over the years because, let's face it, the Wild West in space is just awesome. So I made builds for all three classes based around both the looks and weapons used by characters in the franchise, then took them into Crucible. And there will be some major spoilers for half of the show Firefly and the film Serenity. If you haven't seen the show, I highly encourage you to go watch it. A couple of the cast members have actually lent their voices to some of the most beloved characters in Destiny. Now, for all three classes, I'm going to be going over the fashion first, then follow up with the weapons and the gameplay later. Timestamps will be in the description below. The Hero of Canton, the man they called Jane. Normally I start from the head and work my way down to the class item, but the hat that Jane's mother knit for him is so iconic I have to start with the cloak first. Now I'm using the Legatus Cloak from Season 13 with Up for Grab Shader found in Guardian Games. I really like how it makes the hat yellow with the red pom-pom on top, and if you're not fond of this hat, there is also the Seven Seraph Cloak that's in the same style as the one he wore in a couple of episodes. For the helmet, I went with the Scorched Hunter Mask with the War Weary Shader. This kept the front of the helmet a nice flat grey color, while the sides have bright orange peeking out to lend more color to the hat. Now, Jane Cobb wears a lot of different shirts throughout the show, but he seems to favor greens and yellows, so I went with the Intrepid Discovery Grips shaded with Iron Battalion, and the Loose Vest shaded with Iron Battalion. And yes, that is how loose is pronounced, it's the French word for luxury. Anywho, these two look really well together and the shotgun shells on the outer jacket really play into Jane's obsession with weapons. And finally for the pants, I went with the exotic Lucky Pants with the Deep Pockets Ornament and Rivalry Stoic Shader. He wears beige pants throughout the show, and this shader is one of the few that comes close. And of course the gun holster and ammo belt on Lucky Pants are perfect for the character. For weapons, realistically, anything could feasibly work. Jane has a large collection of weapons. His most beloved gun, though, is Vera. I went with the Seven Seraph Carbine as Vera. It had the longest banana magazine of any auto rifle, along with a scope and some other sci-fi bits stapled on. Something interesting I learned while doing research on the gun is that it's actually a Russian shotgun that was heavily modified for the show. Then in the second slot, I used the Trust Hand Cannon. Jane uses this type of gun frequently, and it has that old style model to it that fits the aesthetic of the show perfectly. Plus, it will interact with the Lucky Pants. Then in the heavy slot, I gave him the Xenophage. Now, Jane doesn't wield anything like this in the show, but you just know that if you gave him a chance, he would absolutely fall in love with this big beauty. Then I ran Bottom Tree Gunslinger for both the heavy throwing knife and the gun that shoots magic fire bullets. It just seemed to really fit the character, although Top Tree Gunslinger would also work pretty well. Now, the gameplay of using this build was absolute chaos. I did it all before the huge stasis nerf, so the biggest issue I ran into was actually stasis, although I imagine now that it's been nerfed, it'll work a whole lot better. The combination of lucky pants and having a trust with opening shot means that I have a lot of aim assist to quickly put down close range targets, and getting headshots with auto rifles because of lucky pants will reload the hand cannon when it's stowed. It's a very aggressive playstyle that took a little getting used to, but once I got the rhythm down it worked out fairly well. It was also the first time I've used Xenophage in the Crucible. Every single time I got heavy though, someone from the enemy team would activate their super and rush me. It is a very effective weapon at taking out supers, although due to its slow rate of fire, I ended up trading with most of the aggressive supers. Malcolm Reynolds, the captain of the Serenity with a heart of gold. Starting with the helmet, I used the Apotheosis Veil. Visually, it has a similar look to the spacesuits he keeps on the Serenity, otherwise Malcolm rarely puts anything on his head. That is, except for the pretty floral bond in it in that one episode, but there's nothing even remotely like that in Destiny 2. Now, throw on Boreal Defiance, and it's almost the exact same shade of green. There's also gameplay reasons for the helmet, but I'll be getting to that a little bit later on. Now, for the gloves, I used the Valkyrian gloves with Gambit Leather because they're fairly simple gloves that fit with the chest armor pretty well. Then for the chest armor, I used the Duster of the Cormant Blade. Throughout most of the show, Malcolm wears a red button-up shirt with either a deep red or brown duster. Fun fact, a duster is the name of this style of jacket and was used to keep dust off of ranchers' clothing while they were traveling long distances on horseback. Now, Gambit Leather makes the main part of this duster a worn brown color, while keeping the shirt that distinctive red color. 
Out of everything in this build though, the boots took the longest to get right. At one point I went through every single shader on every single ornament I had until I found the combination of Intrepid Inquiry boots with oiled gunmetal. This leaves the pants being a nice beige while making the knee-high boots a darker black color. Then finally for the Warlock Bond, I used the Myelova's Tail with Iron Gold. I used this ornament because it looks like an old sensor from an aircraft's dashboard and it kind of fit the theme pretty well. For the weapons, I went with the Sturm and Drain combination. Malcolm uses almost as many different weapons as Jane does, but Sturm with the Symbiosis ornament just fits the sci-fi Wild West aesthetic beautifully. Drang also fits with this, and I used my old Baroque roll that had Gathering Dust in the vaults. Then for heavy weapons, I used the Tarantula Linear Fusion Rifle. I, I considered using a sword for a while, but the only times Captain Reynolds uses a sword is when his enemies drop theirs, or they give him one for a duel. The reason for the tarantula, though, is that in the film Serenity, he literally straps himself onto the hull of his ship with an anti-aircraft gun to shoot at Reavers. And a linear fusion rifle kind of seemed to fit that. And finally for the subclass, I ran Well of Radiance because Malcolm Reynolds will do anything he can to protect his crew, and Well of Radiance has a lot of utility for keeping her allies alive. Out of all three of these builds, Malcolm Reynolds was the most fun inside of Crucible. Sturm and Drang are an amazing combination with how they buff and reload each other, then Apotheos' Veil, in my opinion at least, is being slept on as a very good counter to stasis wielders. Not only does it grant full health and shields when casting your super, but it also gives nearby allies a faster recharge time on their class abilities. I found that it was most effective though, against behemoth titans. After they'd slammed the ground and freeze me, I'd wait until they started their slide or melee before activating Will of Radiance. Any damage I took from nearby crystal shattering is completely negated by Apotheosis Veil, and something a lot of people don't know about Well of Radiance is that it does a bunch of burn damage to enemies caught inside of it when it is cast. So, it'll almost instantly melt stasis titans before they can get to the rest of my allies. And, and one last thing is the ability to charge grenades to provide an overshield for myself and allies. Really great in objective based game types, especially at the beginning of a match. Admittedly, this one is a bit of a stretch, and I will 100% understand if you stop watching the video, but I do have reasons for every part of this, so maybe stick around and see how it all works. Since I already had a hunter as Jane, and a warlock as Malcolm, I needed a firefly build for the titans. That's when I had the idea to do River Tam in Serenity spacesuits. After rewatching both the show and the film, River has the most amount of screen time wearing them other than Captain Reynolds. She wears it when she and her brother are hiding on Serenity's hull, and when she takes over Early's ship. So for the shaders, I use Boreal Defiant on every piece of armor. Depending on how a scene is lit, the suit's color will change slightly from mustard yellow to an OD green, and Boreal Defiant is a nice halfway point between those two, while keeping the fabrics that nice color and the metal pieces a dull silver. Now running through the armor choices real quick, I used the Lost Pacific Helm, which unfortunately it cannot be acquired anymore, so if you weren't around in the early days of Destiny 2, there is the Dreambane Helm that can be acquired on the moon. The gauntlets are the Seven Seraph gauntlets without any ornaments on them. I really like them because they have a lot of cloth as well as the overlapping metal plating. For the chest plate, I originally was going to use Lost Pacific Plate, it has that bulky cloth look to it with the extra cargo room on the front. But, then I noticed that there's nothing on the back, and if you look in the show, that's where the oxygen tanks are. Thankfully though, the Dreambane plate has both a large backpack full of oxygen and the extra cargo space in the front. Now, the boots are the new Path of the Burning Step exotic that can be acquired in Legendary Lost Sectors. I like the look of them because they have the most amount of cloth compared to the most tightened legs in general. The mark is an absolute pain in the rear. I used the Vanguard ornament from the Warmind expansion, Nothing really looked too great for it, but several looked alright, such as the Lost Pacific Mark and the Siege Break Mark. Weapons for River were a bit tricky, because the only weapons she is seen using are a handgun, a sword, and, major spoiler alert for the film Serenity, seriously if you haven't seen it, go and watch it right now, her entire fucking body as she punches a facility full of reavers into human ragu. For the handgun, I used the new survivor's epitaph hand cannon. It's big and chunky and yet has a lot of aim assist, which is important because river shoots all those guys in Niska's facility without even looking. 
Quick tangent here, if you've ever wondered how she was able to pull that off, it's revealed in Serenity that she's a telepath. So she quite literally just shoots at where thoughts are coming from and quickly kills all of them. Now, getting back on track, since she wields a bunch of Reaver melee weapons, I gave her the sword Honor's Edge. My role is purely for PvE shenanigans, but a sword will still kill Guardians and Crucible just fine. Now, for the special weapon, it is a bit of a stretch, I'll admit, but duality. It's one of those weapons that is vintage wood furniture and moving parts, while also incorporating newer sci-fi parts kit bashed into it. Again, this isn't an actual weapon that River Tim uses, but one that fits the Firefly universe beautifully. And for the subclass, I went with Code of the Juggernaut because of all the synergy with punching things and staying alive because of punching things. Gameplay for this was absolutely wild, mostly because it was the first time I'd used Survivor's Epitaph, Duality, and Path of the Burning Steps in Crucible before. Yes, I do have the Duality's Catalyst, and yes, it does require kills in Crucible to fully unlock, but when it first came out, there was a bug where it counted any shotgun kill in Crucible, so I accidentally unlocked the steps with 4th Horseman. Anywho, the Path of the Burning Steps is a lot of fun to use against Wielders of Stasis, and the ability to boost solar weapon damage makes for some interesting duality kills. Survivor's Epitaph feels really good to use, although the disparity between having a large chunky model and the precision archetype took a little bit of getting used to. I did all of this before the big stasis nerf, as previously mentioned, and Path of the Burning Steps were a literal lifesaver in many encounters. Punching people to heal and reload duality means less downtime having to reload and more time spent running at enemies. It requires a very aggressive playstyle to really pull all of this off though. Overall, it is a lot of fun to use, especially in lobbies that are stacked with stasis people. And there you have it, a build for every class based upon the characters in Firefly. I absolutely love the show and would highly recommend it to anyone that enjoys science fiction. If you enjoy Star Wars Rebels, Wild Wild West, or Battlestar Galactica, you may find yourself enjoying Firefly. Now, a little bit of quick housekeeping. My apologies for the lack of videos for the past week and a half. It, it took a lot longer than expected to track down and record all of the clips for this video. I also had a couple of builds that ended up not working out in the slightest, but this next week I'm going to have a lot more builds to put out. So, thank you guys for watching and putting up with me.